This is Grandma reading to her grandkids, Tacky in Trouble by Helen Lester. Tacky in Trouble. As a goodly, lovely angel neatly and perfect sang, sunrise on the iceberg, the sun rose on the iceberg, and they felt very much in charge. What's happening, blared Tacky the penguin, greeting each of his companions with a hearty slap on the back. After breakfast, the penguins went about their morning activities. Whether they were ice block building, napkin folding, feather combing, or ballroom dancing, Tacky was the odd bird. Then it was nap time. Nap time for all, but Tacky, that is. What a great day for surfing, he cried. Would that be fun or what? It would be... What, said goodly, lovely, angel neatly and perfect, go surfing if you must, but please do it quietly. So Tacky took off alone and coasted over the waves. Suddenly the wind came up, filling his shirt like a sail, and he found himself blowing full speed ahead out to sea. He loved the spray on his beak and the thrill of the ride. On he sailed, and on and on through sunny days and starlit nights. By the time he finally reached land, he was standing on tippy toes, on an ice cube with a little heart with his little heart beating in excitement tacky waddled on shore ready for an adventure after being greeted by the strangest penguins he had ever seen he came upon a large gray rock how nice he had lots of rocks at home funny thought tacky this rock is warm the rocks he knew were cold, and it's a little squishy, he said. Hmm. The rocks at home were hard and sort of hairy. Hairy. He couldn't remember any hairy rocks back on the iceberg. Tacky never could sit still for long, so he did little rock hopping dance that he always enjoyed when he was at home. I don't need shoes, and I don't need socks. Just my mellow yellow feet for hopping on the rocks. Hey, I don't need socks, shoes. I don't need socks. Just my mellow yellow feet for hopping on the rocks. I don't. Suddenly, the rock rose up and a voice louder than any penguin's voice he had ever heard, even Tacky's, boomed. Something is tickling my back. Before Tacky could ask what was happening to the rock, whose name happened to be Rocky, Rocky grabbed him, and they were crashing through the jungle. Tacky loved adventures, but was this fun or what? He wasn't sure. Finally, Rocky came to a very great clearing and plunked Tacky down and bellowed, flowers for my table. While Tacky was puzzled, Rocky was overjoyed, for he had taken one look at Tacky's shirt and was convinced she had brought home the most beautiful bunch of flowers in the world. Yes, indeed, just what I need to brighten up this dreary old place. Let's see. I'll need a wide base. It's a gorgeous bunch of flowers, but pretty thick around the stem middle. After choosing her widest vase, Rocky plopped Tacky in and he looked around. The table was set for dinner with ketchup and lemon pie and grape punch and gravy and mustard and marmalade and peanut butter lots of other good things. Rocky glumped gleefully around the table, singing, flowers make all the difference, flowers make all the difference. I'm not a bunch of flowers, said Tacky. Say what? Rocky trumpeted, of course you're a bunch of flowers, don't be silly. She sniffed Tacky. You smell lovely too, thank you, said Tacky. But I'm not a bunch of flowers, I'm a penguin. Rocky eyed Tacky suspiciously. What's a penguin, some sort of weird plant? No, offered Tacky, it's a kind of bird. A bird, snorted Rocky. What a hoot, you're not like any bird I've ever seen. Tacky felt his neck feathers prickle uncomfortably. I'm really, honestly, truly a penguin, he repeated. Rocky did not want to hear this. She wanted flowers. She needed those flowers, and her dull gray home needed those flowers. If you're a penguin, prove it. Rocky demanded. 
Then she reached out, whoosh, she snatched Tacky's shirt. At least I'm keeping the pretty blossoms no matter what. Well, unless you can convince me you're a penguin. Tacky knew she he was in trouble now. His shirt was his sail. And without a shirt, how would he get home? Would he ever see goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect again? Hurry up now, I'm hungry. And I don't have all day, snapped Rocky impatiently. Prove you're a penguin. Do something penguinish. Tacky thought very hard. He just had to show her. Oh, yes. He remembered Penguin March. Well, he began one, two, three, stepped in the ketchup bowl without knowing it, and continued marching over the table. Four, five, seventeen, one hundred. What else? asked Rocky. Penguin's belly slide. Tacky got a running start and skidded across the lemon pie and swished and swirls over the tablecloth. Hmm. Where was that lemon smell coming from? Go on, Rocky ordered. Penguins dive. Tacky took a bounding leap up and did a bit, did a splash of cannonball into the pitcher of grape punch. Refreshing. More confused than convinced, Rocky asked, and keep going. What else? Well, what else could a penguin do? Then he remembered what had gotten him into this situation in the first place. He said, penguins are excellent hoppers, bravely tilting his beak up as best proper hopping form. He hopped in the gravy and hopped on the cloth and he hopped in the mustard and hopped on the cloth and hopped in the marmalade and hopped on the cloth and hopped in the peanut butter and stopped. What a mess. And then he waddled stickily over to Rocky. See, he shrugged. Hopefully, I'm a penguin. Rocky looked at a red, yellow, purple, brown, gold, orange, and tan tablecloth and bellowed, what have you done to my tablecloth? Tacky froze. He had been having so much fun doing penguin things, he hadn't even realized that he made a mess. Uh-oh, he thought. I'm stuck here forever. I'll never get home to my on my iceberg. My tablecloth! My tablecloth, Hooded Rocky! I love it. I simply love it. Look at all these colors. They're brilliant. They're beautiful. And they're so much prettier than your blossoms. No offense. Here you go, you wonderful, odd, whatever you are. And with that, she picked up Tacky's shirt and flipped it to him. She also threw him a hot dog, a cookie, and three kisses. Thank you, she trumpeted as Tacky waved goodbye and set out for the water's edge. He leaped onto her log, thinking, I don't know. I didn't know ice blocks came in brown. And as his shirt caught the wind, he sat sail. Meanwhile, back on the iceberg, goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect were singing Sunrise on the Iceberg. The sun rose, and they didn't feel in charge. Life hadn't been the same without Tacky. Everything was so orderly, and they were tired of patting each other on the back and whispering, What is happening? Nothing was happening. Then they saw a speck in the distance. Could it be? As the speck came closer and closer, they could see it was tacky. Goodly, lovely, neatly. Angel and perfect. Hug tacky. Tacky was an odd bird, but a nice bird to have around. And miles away, an elephant sat by her colorful tablecloth and saw, thought the same thing. The end.